This is Heidi Clark with the Essex Retorter, speaking with Roger Drury, running for state rep from Essex 23? 24. 24, I'm sorry. But for people who are still used to the old numbers, it was 8-3. We, we used to be called 8-3. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, and I'd also like to add that we invited Alyssa Black to do an interview, and she declined. What do you want people of your district to know about you going into November? Well, my name is Roger Drury. I uh, grew up in Essex. Uh, I was born in St. Albans, family of Enosburg until I was five. Uh, moved to Essex, graduated from Essex High School. I am actually a third generation alum of the high school. Uh, my family has been in Essex for a few years. And what I'd like to bring to the table that might be a little different from, uh, from Alyssa is I would like to add a little more conservative, a more conservative voice to, uh, to the Vermont legislature. What's happening in the Republican Party in terms of you're either for Trump or you're against him. Um, how do you feel about that defining the party? And does that create conflict either way with the rest of the Republican Party? So from what I've seen with our Essex citizens, our, our neighbors, is I, I haven't seen that, that conflict. Uh, we do not harp on it. Uh, there are a lot of varying views in the Republican Party. Uh, you know, cons conservative, the conservative nature is to, to listen to each other and respect each other's opinions. So there is a lot of discussion, uh, in a couple of meetings, even some sidebars here and there. But at the end of the day, we have a lot of this, we share the same tenant values of fiscal conservative, individual freedoms, and individual responsibilities. Probably one of the biggest issues ahead for this legislature is um, reproductive freedom. So okay. it's Proposition 5, Article 22 is a, and I didn't bring it with me, but it's a, a specific language that is up to the voters right now to whether they want to incorporate it into the Vermont Constitution. And so quite honestly, it is not going to be a legislative decision okay. for quite some time. This is, it's in the hand of the voters. So right. uh, last, the last legislature voted on it. The governor did sign it. So now the voters will decide whether they want to incorporate Article 22, Prop 5 into the Vermont Constitution. I don't see it as a hugely partisan thing, but it, it could be, I don't, I don't know. I'm not seeing a lot of it. There's not a lot of, of headbutting that, I, that I'm watching, but I'm, I'm, pr I'm a pretty easy going guy, so I, I like to listen. I like to hear people's opinion on it, but when it, at the end of the day, if Roger Drury is elected, Roger Drury will not be voting on Article 22, Prop 5. But I imagine voters might want to know where you stand. I, I think a lot of Vermonters, and specific, specifically our Essex neighbors, will want to know where I stand on the topic of abortion. And it's, uh, it's one of those topics that honestly keeps me up at night because I, I truly believe that life is precious. Uh, I can't, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, I can't truly tell you when, when life begins, but I have, I have known enough people who have lost pregnancies to know that there is something there to feel that loss when, when that happens. So what I believe is that as a conservative, government really has no business having that decision. That is a, that is a personal decision. It's not one that I would make but it is, it is a personal decision nonetheless that needs to be made with, with family, with friends, with various inputs and medical input for, for the individual. I, I do find myself trending a little bit more towards our European partners model where sometime in the middle of the second trimester, maybe the end of the trimester, that's when they start putting a few more limitations on it, but I, you, I could never argue the health and welfare of a mother as a conservative, what I would like to see in a perfect world is less need 
for abortion. And I think if that's a common goal through education or any other inputs, I'm, I'm all for that. Essex and frankly, the whole country has a problem with affordable housing. What would you like to be able to do for Vermont? So I am learning more about our housing challenges uh, as we go. I am certainly not an expert on Vermont housing. I've spoken to a few contractors. I've spoken to some folks in, 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 in other uh, building trades. And there is a preponderance of thought that there is a lot of barriers to entry as well as some town and municipal barriers to entry. So what I would love to see is the ability to, to work with cities and towns to how can we bring back starter homes? How do you get those, those three small bedroom homes, maybe not necessarily to what we did in, after World War II for all the, for all the soldiers and their families uh, after the Second World War, but a way where we can, we can design more communities, more developments, but still put a, put a, um, put a flare on it where we have more efficient lighting, more efficient heating, more efficient uh, insulation, not just, um, you know, put them up and run away, really something that a community can get behind and, uh, and be sustaining as best we can. You know, I, I, have, I have friends who are starting a family and, you know, they don't want to get a tiny little apartment at, you know, 12, 1500 bucks a month. But at the same token, they can't afford a $500,000 home. And so we need to work with our, we need to work with the municipalities where how do we make the construction friendly so that it's worth it for a contractor to build multiple homes in the same spot where they can have common sewer, water, septic, because the, the towns need to help out a little bit with that, with, with permitting, making sure that the wastewater can be taken care of, because it's, it's not just about building. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of infrastructure that goes in behind it as well. I, I do believe that part of the problem is, is supply. And we, have, we are a very building-averse community. When, you know, anytime green space, you know, I love green spaces, I'm a beekeeper. I would like to see as many fields and flowers out there for those bees to, to continue and do the thing. But there has to be a little bit of a balance where you can't stifle all growth because you end up in that, in that problem that you're talking yeah. about right now. If you can't bring people in, then employers can't hire folks. And you're seeing now with Vermont has, just our county alone I think has over 6,000 jobs if you look at in Vermont jobs links. You know, how do we get people in to take those jobs if they have no place to live? Right. And it's a, it's a circular argument, but the, we need to take some active, active role in helping to get people into our community to fill those jobs so those goods and services can get out the door and keep that economy rolling. Gun control. Where are you on that spectrum? Well, I think you need to ask what what gun control is, right? So I believe that the Second Amendment is the freedom to, and the right to carry and bear arms. There are, uh, but there are limitations to everything, right? So felons do not get to, get to own firearms. So I, I believe that we have, some, we have some limitations, but I do believe in con the constitutional amendment. Election reform in terms of the fact that we are moving towards mail-in balloting. Where do you see that going and what do you think the state of Vermont should do to streamline and just make voting more effective? Well, I think our, I think our voting system is, is quite effective. And I would not want to do anything that would restrict somebody's voting access. I think it is a... Uh, not only a right, but it's a responsibility for our citizens. I am not a huge fan of blanket mail order, mail-in votings rather. Just mailing something out as a blanket approach, I don't think it's effective. I think it's very effective having voters coming to a certain location. 
I think it's very effective having voters being able to request a ballot. So if they can't make it on voting day, let's say they have a work conflict, or say they have, um, you know, like soldiers overseas getting uh, absentee ballots, I think that is perfectly uh, legitimate and a, and a great direction to go. I, I'm just not a huge fan of mailing everything out in bulk and just having it sit there in mailboxes. Are there any other issues you'd like to discuss? Well, I think one of the other issues that is weighs pretty heavy on Vermonters is, uh, is, is climate change. So anytime you have a system with so many inputs, it's very difficult to say that one thing or another is affecting it and one thing or another isn't affecting it. So to say that man has no effect on climate, I think would be just as improbable to say as man has every effect on the, on the environment. I am uh, a firm believer that we should get off of foreign oil or any of these oils in order to, to conserve our resources in our, in our nation. What I don't think we should do, however, is tax the daylights out of it and put our vulnerable populations who are heavily reliant on fossil fuels, especially as we go into winter, and put them in a, uh, in a heating crisis that's man-made. We need to look at different ways to help folks with insulation, as we do in the weatherization program, uh, and other conservation methods, but not through taxation. That is, that's just only going to hurt Vermonters. Thank you for speaking with us today. This is Heidi Clark with the Essex Reach Order, speaking with Roger Drury.